What's up, guys? It's Brandon from the Two Piece Mandem, and welcome back to Premier League Prediction Week 4. We missed number three, my apologies. Had things to do, should have gone out, but listen, we're back. Week number four is in place, and a lot of things happened, a lot of drama, a lot of late winners. And if you guys haven't watched that Darwin Nunes one, then make sure you click that one and watch that. And today's going to be a double upload. If you guys haven't seen, I've also uploaded the Chelsea versus AFC Wimbledon preview as well. Make sure you leave a like on that. And don't forget to subscribe as well, because these Premier League predictions will be weekly. The reviews as well will be weekly. The match reactions, the previews, everything. I'm covering all things, even injuries and transfer updates, because the transfer window isn't officially over yet. So make sure you stay tuned for that. All right, so we're going to get into the first game. And let's be honest, we all know who's going to win this game. Let's be real. Come on. It's his Luton Town versus West Ham. Now, Luton, you know, we put them in a spliff. Um, they didn't even play that bad, to be honest with you. I feel as though we could have, we should have scored more. We should have at least won that game 6 0. Like, if I'm being brutally honest, we should have just absolutely destroyed them 100%. But obviously, you know, they put up a bit of a fight. Obviously, the quality is lacking. They had a chance against Robert Sanchez. Um, Sanchez um, saved it. Other than that, not much is really going to happen, let's be real. So, it was one of those ones. West Ham, on the, on the other hand, surprisingly, um, amazing performance. Not only did they beat us, but they obviously um, put Brighton in a spliff. Basically, destroyed them 3-0, and that's exactly what happened. So, you know... West Ham doing bits, man like Antonio, Ward Prowse, and Bowen as well. So yeah, absolutely put them in a spliff. So for this one, it's gonna be Luton Town nil, West Ham four. Let's just be real, Luton Town aren't good enough. West Ham are just gonna dump on them, and they're on good form as well with the players playing well and the morale going up as well. So yeah, moving on to the next game, Sheffield United versus Everton. Now both teams are rubbish. Sheffield United didn't have to play bad. Against Man City, um, it was unfortunate because Rodri scored the winner at the end and made it two one to Man City for them to win it. But other than that, they didn't really play that bad. They kept a good shape, you know. They could have conceded a hell of a lot more. Yet again, Man City didn't, didn't take their chances. Do you know what I mean? But a two one result in Man City isn't bad. Do you know what I mean? Especially when you know what Man City are going to do and how you're going to set up and how they're going to play and that freaking you know Terminator Irving Haaland, you know he's going to play as well. Everton just absolutely rubbish. Not good enough at all. Um, got spliffed up. And, um, yeah, they're just not good enough. So, yeah. It's going to be Sheffield 1, Everton 0. Going on to the next game. Manchester City versus Fulham. Um, for me, people will probably predict Man City to just swipe them. But the way Fulham played against Arsenal, and yes, the mistake that Arsenal made, um, I still feel so Fulham played well, considering they're 10 men down and they still scored a late equaliser to salvage a point from that game at the Emirates. And again, just getting a point from the Emirates is not easy. Like, more time you're going to get dominated with the amount of threat and attacking players and quality that Arsenal have. So, it's very impressive from them. I'm not going to lie. I was very impressed. Um, for me, at the Etihad, I reckon it's going to be 1-1. I reckon it's going to be a game where City slip up and their 100% record goes, you know. I reckon Haaland will score, but I reckon Fulham, Ra Ra Jimenez will score as well. I reckon it's one of those games because they're going to slip up. And I reckon if it's going to be a team that you're going to slip up against, it's a Fulham. Fulham's a proper bogey team. Trust me. You're on to the next game. Uh, it's my team. Chelsea first is Nottingham Forest. Now, this is a game on paper. We should win and beat them 4-0. But, you know, things don't work that way because, you know, this is the Premier League. You know what I'm saying? So, obviously, now, Nottingham Forest, are, because their defence is absolute crap, they got lucky with, let's be honest, right? They got lucky with two goals. They had two lucky goals. Um, first one literally went Marcus Rashford poor defending. Awani, absolute baller. I think that's his third of the season already. Scores that goal. What a tremendous goal. Drops on Arna and scores. Then then um, Bonnie, or Bodie, whatever his name is, across literally, ball literally come, hits off his face. Didn't know anything about it and it goes into the back of the net. So yeah. Um, for us, obviously, we put Luton in a spliff. Man like freaking Raheem, Rascal Sterling, and Action Jackson, you know, like that. Raheem looks like he's on form. Jackson getting his gold as well for his confidence, do you know what I'm saying? Um, the whole team played well, but at the end of the day, it is against Luton. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, I was at Stamford Bridge. I want us to win, don't get me wrong, but my heart's my heart, my heart says we'll win, but my, I gotta be real with this because it's the Premier League. I reckon we'll draw. I'm gonna say Chelsea two, Nottingham Forest two. Um, honestly, we should beat them four 0 easily, but just how the Premier League is and just how everything else is moving, and just how this new stipulations have come into play, I reckon it's just gonna be a draw. And, but this is a game that we should win. Do you know what I mean? Like we should have beaten West Ham. Didn't win. Beat Luton, but who's Luton really? Now we're against Nottingham Forest, who actually have threat and have players that can finish and this on the counter. Do you know what I mean? So, for me, it's going to be 2-2. Next game, Burnley versus Tottenham. Tottenham are on good form. Burnley were not good enough against Villa. Got swept. Tottenham, they're doing bits. They're going to win, let's be real. Um, a good goal from Madders. Malak Madison's changed it. Then putting in an attacking midfielder and a creative player changed it. Roger Alderson stunk up the gaff as usual. Not good enough. And then um, I think for the second goal, good goal from Kulovetsky, by the way. That little touch. So yeah, 2-1 to Tottenham for that one. Next game, Brentford versus Bournemouth. Um, Brentford play really well. Bournemouth are simply not good enough. Let's just be real with who they are. Donald, Donald Solanke and everything like that. They're just not good enough. Bournemouth actually have Fred with Mbembo and Weezer and very other good players as well. So Brentford for that game. It's going to be Brentford 2, Bournemouth 0. And then Brighton versus Newcastle. It's going to be filled with goals. Brighton, poor performance against West Ham. Um, losing 3-1. Wasn't good enough. Newcastle. Pff, I don't even know what to say about you, Geordies. How on earth are you 1-0 up and the man Liverpool are one are 10 men down and you still lose that? That's not good enough. 100%. It's not good enough. You should have won that. And, you know, you got yourself to blame. Not good enough at all. I reckon it's going to be a high-scoring game, to be honest, because both teams love to attack. The game will end 3-3. Crystal Palace versus Wolves. Well, to be honest with you, Wolves can't finish for dog shit, do you know what I'm saying? Crystal Palace will probably put them in a spliff. We won't put them in a spliff. Well, they'll, they'll beat them, but by a very small margin at Sohos Park. So it'll be Crystal Palace 2, Wolves 1. Liverpool versus Villa. Liverpool shaky at the back, but yet again... Man like Darwin, Ross, Clark, Nunes. And again, if you haven't checked out that video, check it out. You know them way there. Um, saves Liverpool from a, from a 1-0 deficit and gets them the three points from zero, zero to hero real quick. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, you now Villa, they played well against Burnley. Great football. Ollie Watkins, new signing Diabe, John McGinn, Buendia, you know, Matty, Ross, Clark, Cash, everyone played really good football. I reckon it's going to be a high-scoring game at Anfield, but Liverpool will probably get the dub. I'm going to say Liverpool 4, Aston Villa 3. Finally, at the Emirates, the big game that, we all, that we're all talking about, the game that we all want to watch. No other freaking game. This is the big one, the big daddy. This is the one that we all want to watch. It's the beef. It is freaking Wenger versus Alex Ferguson. It's Roy Keane versus Patrick Vieira. It is Arsenal versus Manchester United. A very, very high and intense rivalry game. As we do know, the history of this game is absolutely magnificent. With the greats that we've seen from this game, the battles, the rivalry, the intense dugout between Roy Keane and Patrick Vieira. Absolutely brilliant. This has everything in it and it's not like it used to be. Arsenal against Fulham. Honestly, I don't understand how Arsenal... I don't even like Arsenal, but how on earth have you just like let Fulham come back into that game? You got you played so well to get back into it, even though it was your fault that you were in that situation anyway. Like a poor pass from Saka. Where was the right back? Like, come on. No one covering that. And it's just an easy goal for freaking what's his face? For Pereira. And then <sighs> a good combat though, bringing on Vieira though. Hi Habits did absolutely nothing. I don't know why you play Habits. He did Jackal, um, bringing on Vieira. People were mocking, people were criticizing him, saying he's not good enough, this and that. Saw his quality, changed the game, super sub at the highest. Then he brought in Eddie and Ketia, super subs worked, right? They score a goal, right? Um, was it a penalty? Hell yeah, it was a penalty. Um, Vieira, Saka scores it, then Vieira sets up Eddie, Eddie, Eddie and Ketia to make it 2 1 to the Arsenal. And then 2-1 to the Arsenal. Fulham get a man sent off. You think, okay, see this game out. 
2 1 to the Arsenal. Easy three points. But no. Arsenal are going to make things difficult for themselves. Lack of concentration at the end. And they bowled it. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. That's why that video I named it Bowl Jobs. Not good enough at all. And I got a point from that. And it ain't good enough because they're now behind Man City. And you know, if you're behind Man City, then it's just long. It's just jarring. Manchester United, um, poor from them, not good enough. Well, how, are, how are you 2 0 down against Nottingham Forest at your own home ground? Like, genuinely, like, great comeback. Like, don't get me wrong. But, bro, like, you shouldn't be having to come back against Nottingham Forest. It's not like you versus Manchester City or, like, Liverpool or anything like that. And we can say, okay, fair enough, that's a brilliant comeback. Like, no, you're against Nottingham Forest. You expected to smash them, like, 3 0. And you literally were 2 0 down and you had to come back to win that. Is this the Man United we're talking about now? Because all I know, the Man United 10 years ago, they, they didn't do that shit. They would have swapped that team 5 0. That's the Man United I know. The Man United back in uh, 2011, 2012, even further than that, probably the 60s would have slapped, slapped that team 9 0. Really? You have to come back against Nottingham Forest when you're 2 0 down? Dog shit all around. Ain't good enough. And now you want to get. Now you. Because Luke Shaw's freaking injured. You want to loan Cucurella? You think he's going to make your defense better? Come on, let's be real, people. Final score for this game. It's going to be Arsenal 3 and Man United 1. Man United rarely score at the Emirates, let's be honest. Um, it's, it's not really going to happen. The only reason why Arsenal are gonna are gonna concede one goal, and why Man United are gonna score, is because they give stupid mistakes. But overall, Arsenal are gonna win it. It's just as simple as that. Hundred percent. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, like all the other videos as well. I'll see you guys in a bit. And peace.